from CBS News Bay Area. This is the Primetime Edition on PIX+. Plus. Good evening, I'm Devin Feely. These are tonight's Primetime Headlines. Warriors legend Al Adels has died at the age of 87. The Hall of Famer played point guard. He was known as a destroyer and played for 11 seasons for the San Francisco Warriors. He then went on to coach the Dubs for their first ever championship in 1975. Our Vern Glynn is going to have a lot more on this later in the hour. Downtown San Jose is a new burger joint. Mayor Matt Mahan cut the ribbon on campus burgers on Paseo de San Antonio downtown. After a soft launch, they're now serving up affordable eats for everybody. Their burgers started just $1.99. A federal court has ruled that HIV positive people can be allowed to join the military. The judge says that the HIV virus with undetectable loads doesn't keep anyone from performing military duties. But the Defense Department argues that providing medicine to keep the viral loads undetectable could ultimately cost too much money. And taking a live look outside in San Francisco, let's go and get a check of our first alert forecast with meteorologist Darren Pack. Devin, it's a little early in the year to be looking up to the Gulf of Alaska to find our weather. But that exactly is exactly where we need to be looking right now. Kind of a unique change coming our way with a noticeable drop in temperatures and even a small chance of rain as we're watching the development of a system way up in the Gulf of Alaska, about to get developed and make its way here. Um, it's gonna bring our temperatures down. It's going to increase the onshore influence here and we're certainly going to feel a noticeable cool down over the next few days from this. I mean, onshore is already starting to turn. It's already starting to strengthen in terms of the amount of cool influence that's about to get pushed into the bay because of this. So let's just go in order and we'll start out with what tomorrow's daytime highs are going to look like. And these numbers are in some cases five and in some cases nine degrees cooler than you were today. So you pick out your part of the bay and you're only going to the mid 70s tomorrow. And Friday's actually the coolest day. We'll look at that in the seven day forecast and we're also gonna put this into the future cast. I'll show you how likely any rain might be in the North Bay from that system. See you in a bit, Devin, back to you. All right, thank you, Darren. It is night number three in Chicago at the Democratic National Convention and Governor Tim Walz took the stage as the Democratic vice presidential nominee, but also center stage were some important issues in this election in this campaign, namely immigration and reproductive rights. The Democrats' overarching theme is a fight for our freedoms. Skylar Henry reports from Chicago. Stevie Wonder set Chicago's United Center on fire as the Democrats partied into their third convention night. Comedian Kenan Thompson hosted a game of Hollywood Squares featuring delegates, and actress Mindy Kaling was the evening celebrity host. Well of the Democratic National Convention. Former President Bill Clinton also spoke. If you can get them elected and let them bring in this breath of fresh air, you will be proud of it for the rest of your life. Your children will be proud of it. But the night was punctuated by some serious topics, including reproductive freedoms. Our bodies are on the ballot, and come November 5th, we will decide this election. And immigration. When Donald Trump comes down to Texas, stands next to officers in uniforms just like mine, he's not there to help us. Just like when he killed the border bill. He just made our jobs harder. And an emotional appearance from Rachel Goldberg and John Poland. Their son Hirsch was captured by Hamas on October 7th, one of eight Americans. Hirsch, if you can hear us, we love you. Stay strong. Minnesota Governor Tim Walz is tonight's keynote speaker, and he will formally accept the nomination as Vice President Kamala Harris's running mate. Tonight is considered Governor Walz's debut Vice on a national Chair. stage. She was relative unknown about a month ago, but a new CBS News poll finds that some 60% of Democratic voters say they're enthusiastic about it. Walz is planning to highlight his upbringing in a small Nebraska town his service in the Army National Guard, and his work as a high school teacher and football coach, work that eventually led to Congress and the state capitol. As Attorney General of California, Kamala Harris cracked down on human trafficking and mortgage fraud, but we should also know that she passed on suing Trump University. Reporter Steve Large takes us back to her campaign for Attorney General and what it means to her presidential campaign now. She's 
running for president now. Can you think of any laws that give government the power to make decisions about uh, the male body? Before she was on the national stage. I'm not, a, I'm not a thinking of any right now. Kamala Harris was running for California Attorney General. Please join me at this point in welcoming our two candidates who are here with us this afternoon. The year was 2010. Steve, I think that you really should not um, go below the dignity of this debater. With Kamala Harris. Past performance is a great predictor of the future. And Steve Cooley in a tight race for top cop in California. Harris's victory then propelling her to her place in politics now. So you run for uh, attorney general 15 years ago and, and all of a sudden people are calling you again. Yeah, that's the case. I called up the man she beat in that race, Steve Cooley, and he recalled some prophetic words from his then campaign manager. The interesting thing about that race was my consultant, a guy named uh, Spillane, Kevin Spillane, he said, Steve, do you realize that this AG's race is not about her being attorney general? It's about her being something higher, like vice president. And I said, what? Maybe no one knows Kamala Harris's time as attorney general better than the man who posed questions to her that debate night then, Dan Moraine. I guess this goes to Ms. Harris. He wrote the book on Kamala Harris, literally. But this was your first book? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Simon Schuster took a total flyer on me, and they, you know, but they're happy with it, and they're... And are you happy with it? Yeah, it's fine. Moraine was editorial page editor for the Sacramento Bee and did not endorse Harris for attorney general then. We endorsed Steve Cooley over Kamala Harris. Moraine covered her time as attorney general closely, her work creating a mortgage fraud strike force, her takedown of for-profit Corinthian colleges for predatory lending practices, the case against Backpage.com, arresting the founder of the online advertiser for escort services and human trafficking. She wanted to kill Backpage. She went after it with all the resources of our office, and we shut it down. Maggie Krell worked under Harris as a supervising deputy attorney general. What do you think uh, her expectation of you was? to be as tough as nails. Did you ever get a sense from her and your conversation with her that she aspired to maybe run for president one day? We didn't discuss that. As attorney general, Harris was also known not to take positions on statewide initiatives, including those involving the death penalty, which she says she's personally opposed to. You know, it's, it's, it's a pretty awesome power. So if she was cautious while being a prosecutor, I'm not sure that's a bad thing. And I wonder if the question now is, was she cautious or calculating, thinking about her political future? You know, that her job is to, is to um, carry out policy and politics as she sees fit. Our job is to ask questions. While she was attorney general, Harris did get the support of the very man she's running against now. Donald Trump wrote a $5,000 check to her re-election campaign Harris later had an opportunity to file a fraud lawsuit against Trump University, which the New York State Attorney General did and won. Harris never filed that lawsuit. Everybody has their um, uh, resources issues, and so she chose to go after Corinthian and not Trump University. It made sense to me as, as an explanation. This prosecutor turned politician. The man Kamala Harris beat for California Attorney General then is campaigning against her now. She's no real prosecutor. She's no friend of victims. Only this race won't be determined by a judge. You know, we voters will be her jury. America's verdict will come from voters. We're getting more reaction to the DNC from across the Bay Area. Kelsey Thord talked to a mix of voters in the East Bay for their take on the road to the White House so far. Barbara and Rick Palmieri say they watched almost every second of night one of the Democratic Let's National Convention and were more than impressed. And last night was all the reasons why we're not only proud to be an American, but proud to be behind people that want the things that America stands for. Barbara and Rick say for most of their lives they were registered Republicans. But in recent years, they felt like the party they once believed in has lost its way. You know, I just see 
the Trump campaign and just who he is and stands for, it's like, it's almost like trying to be a dictator and it's just been really hard to even hear his voice for one thing. Rick and Barbara say they're now supporting Kamala Harris and the Democrats, and they're not alone. Neenan Fox told us she too used to be a Republican, but then changed to an independent. Nina says she's also been impressed with the DNC so far. Really happy to see that Steve Kerr was selected to speak. Um, he's just an awesome human being and he's had a lot of accomplishments and I think he's very well respected. So I was most excited to, to see him speak. And I also thought that Hillary Clinton was a rock star. But not everyone we spoke with was excited about this election. Desiree Walton told us she's not a fan of either candidate. I am so moderate that, <laughs> that I have to choose. The last four times I have been able to vote, I've had to choose between the lesser of two evils. And it sucks. Desiree told us the only candidate she's ever been excited about was Bernie Sanders. Still, she's engaged and curious about how the Trump-Harris debate will go. Back with Barbara and Rick, they too told us they're curious to see how the election plays out. It's one they think will be consequential in how our country functions moving forward. But right now, it's about simplifying what it means to be an American and what it means to stand for the platform that America was built on, which is the fact that I as an American have rights and I also have the privilege of voting and having a say in this democracy and that is at risk.